Coming up on this week in Radio Tech, we're at WJXA Mix 92.9 in Nashville, Midwest Broadcasting, but we're not here to see the radio station. We're here to see something else. It's the next best thing on Twerk. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by Broadcasters General Store with outstanding service, savings, and support online at bgs.cc. By Broadcast Bionics with the Bionic Studio, including talk show control, social media, and visual radio, Broadcast Bionics brings exceptional audience engagement to radio and TV. By Angry Audio, audio problems disappear when you get angry at angryaudio.com. By Nautel, online at nautel.com slash webinars. And by Max Connect Wireless, prioritized high-speed internet service designed for transmitter sites and remote broadcasts. Hey, welcome into This Week in Radio Tech, the show where we're talking about everything from the uh, light bulb at the top of the tower, and there is a tower right there, <laughs> to, to the microphone, or the other way around. Hey, I'm Kirk Harnack. I'm live on location today. You know, Chris Tobin often is on location somewhere interesting. And today I get to get out of the office. I'm at the studios of WJXA, Mix 92.9 and uh, I-106.7, and uh, I think I've got another station too, uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee. In fact, let me turn the camera around and I'll show you their building. There we are on Rosedale Avenue. And there's the STL towers right there. They have a couple of them because this building has done all kinds of technical things uh, in the past. Um, we're here because there's an event going on that we're going to talk about. It is called the next big thing, a media tour. The next big thing is my friend Gregory Dahl. He's been a guest on this podcast before. Uh, Greg Dahl is traveling the country with a bunch of other engineers, factory reps, and so forth, uh, bringing NAB to engineers all over the country. They're stopping in about 40 or 45 cities. We'll talk to Greg in a few minutes. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Nashville, nice and cool. It's fall weather. It's upon us. No chance of rain or very slim, and uh, so we should have a really good broadcast. Uh, the wind has mostly stayed down. All the tents are still in place. So that's it from Nashville. Well, that's not it, but let's turn it over to Chris Tobin. He's on location somewhere in New York City. Hey, Chris, welcome in. What is that? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, uh, <laughs> Just enjoying some pizza here. Uh, let me uh, let me get myself together. I missed my producer cue. Anyway, yes, uh, I am on location here in New York City. I happen to be on the East River, well, along the side of the East River, that is. I'm not on it, but uh, just thought I'd try something out because you know it's amazing how sometimes wireless can work if you do it right. That's all I'm going to show you. I'll have to wait for later for the details. Yeah. Okay. Have it. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> we'll get the details later on. Um, so, uh, hey, Chris, before we really get into the show, we got to mention what's going on at Nautel. Because we're doing this show live on Monday, you still have time to register. You, me, everybody still has time to register for Nautel's uh, Transmission Talk Tuesday coming up tomorrow if you're watching this live. Uh, Transmission Talk Tuesday is about cloud-based everything tomorrow. Tuesday, uh, October the 20th at 12 noon Eastern Time. Now, in this session, Jeff and his guests will discuss cloud-based and virtual applications and what steps can be taken to improve reliability way beyond anything we could have dreamed of with our historical purpose-built boxes. Now, the guests on the show uh, show and it's a uh, it's a it's a roundtable discussion. You can you can be on there and ask your own questions. Uh, guests include Dub Irvin, who's the VP of Radio and Automation at Wide Orbit, Nathan Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering at RCS, and John Shore, who's a colleague of mine. He's actually the president at Telos Alliance Systems Group. So check it out at nautel.com slash webinars. I'm already registered and you can be too. And when you go to nautel.com slash webinars Hey, the next webinar coming up the next Tuesday, and by the way, if you're watching this replay on Thursday, you've already missed the uh, Cloud Everything uh, uh, broadcast roundtable. So you might as well sign up for the next one. Uh, the next one is uh, going to be, well, I can't say it. It's a family show. Uh, it's what happens when, you know, the stuff hits the fan and everything goes kaboom, and, and it's, just, it's a bad, bad day for you as an engineer. How to turn that back into a good day by getting things going again. Uh, so just you can register for both at the same time. If you're watching this live, go to nautel.com slash webinars and register for both of the webinars. Uh, it's actually a roundtable discussion coming up uh, this month. So one of them is the 20th and the next one is the 27th. And uh, Nautel, we appreciate your participation and letting us talk about 
Nautel.com's roundtable discussion on Transmission Talk Tuesdays. All right, I don't know what I'm going to run into here, but uh, we're going to pull the camera in this booth here and grab our our first victim. Come on hey, in. How are you? those masks? Summit Technology pen. Group. Yep. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm. Well, everybody here is wearing a mask except me, and I asked the organizers, do I need to wear a mask? They said, and our guys will take their mask off and just kind of, kind of, back off from them just a little bit sure sure uh, tell us who you are and, and why you're here absolutely so i'm paul stewart i'm with summit technology group and um, we are showing a couple of new products that we have and some new features in our uh, existing uh, uh existing products such as uh, sidecar radio logger um, we've got new transcription tools new machine learning uh tools as well um uh, captioning and, and and transcribing video and and really structuring your data um, on the new product front, we uh, have a brand new product called Atmos. It was released um, uh, in October of last year. Um, of course, we were unable to show it this year out in Vegas, but we are showing it um, city to city uh, here and with the Next Best Thing Tour. And Atmos is an automated weather delivery product. So what it does is essentially um, allows the user to create a script, a uh, script template, um, it pulls down um, live and local weather, um, you know, for that market, for multiple markets as well. So you could do multiple locations all at once, um, and then you can sort of uh, create an audio file and, and get that onto the air. So it really um, gives a, a natural sounding text to speech uh, voice that will provide live and local, uh, you know, feeling weather and uh, get that onto the air for you very, very quickly. All uh, people can come by to the next best thing. You guys, do you have to know what cities you're in next, or do I need to ask Greg Dahl that? So we're gonna we're gonna be in Dayton, Ohio tomorrow, and then we're gonna be in Cincinnati the next day, in Indianapolis on Thursday, um, and then the next leg of the tour uh, kicks off in Oklahoma City, and then I believe we do a few cities down in Texas and move uh, move east towards Florida. So. That's a lot of driving. Do you like sleep while you drive? I do. Yeah, it's a, it's an acquired skill, but it's uh, you know, it, it gets easier as the show goes on. So Summit Technology Group is here with Sidecar. You guys do compliance consulting and this this weather product is is a pretty new thing, yeah. Absolutely. And what we found, you know, originally uh, of course back in October of last year, we kind of thought, you know, hey, this is going to this is going to serve small and mid-sized markets. This is going to be for sort of those, you know, smaller broadcasters that don't have uh, uh, stations that are attended 24 hours a day and with this whole COVID thing and, and, and working from home and broadcasting from home we realized that even some of the big stations in the biggest markets are interested in this product now and so that's why we've implemented some of these new features the locations manager the sponsor manager to really sort of round out the uh, the solution for those larger larger stations. A lot of the, the services you offer are unfamiliar to engineers um, and that's why people need to check out what you do. You guys help make radio more profitable uh, and easier to do and more automated and yet keep a local feeling, keep the the content uh, accurate and, and sounding fresh and not sounding automated if you will. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a big believer in you know live and local radio and you know I, what I like to say is you know we merely augment you know, uh, stations, uh, you know, on air, for example, with Atmos, you know, we're, we're augmenting, you know, in, the, in their overnight hours, we're providing up to the minute weather, we're providing um, up to the minute news and so on and so forth and, 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 and helping them sort of round out their their presentation so interestingly my own radio stations are are doing some of this already but we're not using your services so we'll be sure and check yours out Excellent. as we try to get our our, our own on-air presentation better and better awesome thanks so much Kirk. oh thank you hey who else is around here we can uh, chat with you absolutely jeff from oh there's jeff hey jeff hey, i thought he was hanging out behind you and don't you go away you're going to want to come talk to us won't you <laughs> hey jeff hey how are it's you good uh, nice uh, uh, good, good to see you there. Let's see. Are, are we both in the camera shot here? Almost. Oh, oh there we are. Here, why don't you come over this oh, way just a little bit? I'll, I'll move over. Jeff, uh, uh, now your last name is Yellowtech. Yes. Yeah. Jeff Yellowtech Williams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, middle initial. Do you have any chance to, to grab that little mixer and bring it over here? Yeah. Let me Je Jeff's going to jump off camera and bring this little mixer over. It's so cool. Uh, Yellowtech has been improving and improving and improving this little mixer. It's pretty. It's it's better than pretty. It's slick looking. Well, I, I'm going as far as the oh, uh, the cord can go. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Well, let's see here. We'll just, we'll just bring the camera over. Oh, there we go. Here see, we go. I'm also the cameraman. Isn't that, isn't there that we awesome? go. Look awesome. at that. There we go. There we go. So here's our Intellimix mixer. So we are a live wire partner. You and I, in fact, last uh, last time we saw each other at IBC, we went over this uh, console. So we are a live wire partner. Yeah. But the nice thing is that we also decided to speak multiple languages. 
that is cool. So and we at the, and at the same time, it's not switch. Time. You know, Dante or Live Wire. No, you or, can you can actually use it as a router behind the scenes, uh, uh, translating for you too, uh -huh. if you want to. So uh, what you can do is you can bring in like a Ravenna source and then kick it out back out Live Wire if you want it. Um, and even we'll do GPIO and everything with uh, LiveWire. So, wow. So we speak uh, Dante, Ravenna, and LiveWire. Now, LiveWire the, Plus, by the way. Now, I know that bouncing around in the back of the truck, things happen. So it looks like all the fader knobs have fallen off of this IntelliMate. Oh, no, no. This is the beauty of it. It's the touch faders. <laughs> That's so cool. So the, the, the beauty of this unit is, is that rather than having a, another console with mechanical faders in it, yeah. we wanted a tactile sensation without looking like a touching a computer screen. But we wanted to be able to have this nice black channel, you might want to call it, that has a little bit of texture in it. So you're, as you run your finger on it, it follows along and uh, and adjusts your audio for you. Can, it, can I touch that? Yes, you may. So, ooh. Oh, so you can touch it there. Right. And you don't have to grab it where it is. You There's a couple settings. It. This is currently in what's called offset setting. Oh. I decided to show it to somebody earlier where you can't have your finger anywhere in here and adjust the level. Okay. Um, but... You can turn that off, and you will have to take your finger to where the level is, yeah. to, so to capture your yeah. finger, and then adjust the audio. Um, you can even uh, ch change it to where it's just a single dot, you know, where the oh, levels yeah. are. Um, also, that, that's for the nighttime guy that doesn't want too much light. That's right, yeah, because yeah. he's being so cool at night. And then, uh, then also, uh, this is an option too. Again, all these options can turn on and off, and you can also uh, administratively lock them out so you don't have your talent playing with things behind the scenes. You, it'll also do a uh, fade up and fade down. Oh, yeah. okay. That's an option too that I happen to turn on the show as a sample today. Wow. So, and then uh, internally, it has. Uh, Full layer of uh, equalization, uh, compression, expansion, de-essing. Um, again, you can lock those things out. You can preset them. Uh, you can also have snapshots for individual users, that sort of thing. So I, this product came out a few years ago, and you guys apparently have improved it, improved it. We, Especially with the multilingual, if you will. The, oh, yeah. We like speaking different languages. Uh, we announced this product in 2016. And uh, officially, a year and a half ago, we came out with the audio IP card, which is now standard with the unit and uh, we'll speak all those languages. And um, the other thing, too, is that we're finding we have over 100 of them here in the United States currently in use. Um, one particular uh, buyer happens to be television production houses. We do offer an SDI embedder and de-embedder as an option, and it's something that you know definitely inquire if you're uh, in the video world. Well, uh, there'll never be, I don't think there'll ever be just one language because there's always something that people need to do. Right. Uh, there's NDI, there's SD, SD2110-30. Which we're also part of, SDI, too. SDI, yeah. So, and, and, the, and Livewire and AES67 and Dante. Right, exactly. Wow. So we're working on lots of things to constantly update this guy. Now, are you guys the, make, the guys that make these uh, fancy uh, arms? We, we are always well known for making fancy microphone arms and lighting systems, you know, that show uh, status indications and that sort of thing. Oh yeah, now that, that lets me know if I've hit the jackpot or not. That Bingo. If it's flashing, that means they're going to send somebody over to bring you your big check. Yes. Okay. Cool. Hey, Jeff, we got we got to uh, move on, but yes. thanks, thanks for your time. I really no appreciate problem. it. Thanks for having me today. That's Jeff Williams, uh, Jeff Yellowtech Williams, and Yellowtech <laughs> really is his, his middle name. Hey, Chris, uh, how's things going at, at your end? Where are you anyway, Chris? Did you ever re reveal that and I missed it or what? I'm here in Manhattan on the East Rift in the Easter. background you see is the 59th Street Bridge. Yes. Going over to Queens. Oh. That's uh, Roosevelt Island across the way. Yeah, I'm just uh, enjoying a nice uh, afternoon here. Sun is setting behind me. It's pretty good. It's, uh, it's, how far it's are you from, from How far are you from the UN? A uh, matter of fact, I can see it from here. I'm about I don't know, 6 blocks. Let me see if this works. Hang on. Let's see if this works. Let's have some There you go. Oh, yeah. Can you right see there. it? Okay. There it is. I was trying to get my so, bearings. Yeah. I've never been to the UN, but you certainly see it when you're there. Wow. Yep. All right. Hey, so uh, uh, we're, broadca so. I'm, uh, we're broadcasting live in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Kirk Harnack on This Week in Radio Tech along with uh, Chris Tobin. And we're going to take a break in just a minute. But first, I want to talk to Shane Finch. Hi, Shane. How are you? Good. Good, good. good to have you here. Thank you. took your mask off just for me, didn't you? I did. I'm going to stand kind of over here. <laughs> it's supposed to be a little bit distant. Absolutely. Um, so, you, you, uh, en ENCO, what's going on with ENCO these days? Lots happening in ENCO. You know, probably from your years in the, the business of our legacy product, DAD, which is digital audio delivery, which is the radio and audio playout 
uh, automation system. But we've also got Clipfire, which is the video playout system that came along some years ago. And now we're pretty excited about a product called Encaption, which is a captioning software hardware component that is being used not only in the media industry, but it's being used by uh, legislatures around the United States to caption uh, their, their audio to capital TV and to different things like that. I think the most fun version of that that I've seen, however, are a couple of radio stations who are doing unique content in the talk area that are captioning to their stream. Okay. And so hearing impaired can go to their stream and read what's going on on their talk format. Well, when, when you guys first came out with Encaption, and, uh, and I, I believe I was talking with, with Eugene Novacek about this at the time, and he told me it's, it's radio for deaf people. That's exactly what it is. Sure, it's that's a, yeah, that's what it is. But it's blossomed into so much more than that yeah. because we yeah. can caption Zoom meetings now and yeah. and think about what's happened in the last six months. I mean, uh, city councils can no longer meet in person, so right. they want to be able to deliver a really quality product to public access television and so on. And in order to do that, they can caption that and uh, allow all their entire audience to be able to to, to participate. So it's exciting. It's great. And, you know, you think about Encaption, it's not just for television or radio, but it's for um, uh, transcribed depositions in the legal field. And, and we're blessed to have uh, people like the, uh, the legislature in the state of Pennsylvania that are using it on all of their feeds for their sessions. Uh -huh. And so it captions incredibly accurately and it's got uh, really neat features. So we're, we're really enjoying this season with Encaption. One of the concepts that I heard about in Caption, maybe it maybe it's grown beyond this now, but that it uh, it was aware of the context, like during a TV weather segment, it would have a vocabulary more tuned to naming the little towns like Pixley, Arkansas, or West Undershirt, Arkansas. You know, whereas if the sports guy was talking, it would kind of not worry so much about the weather terms sure yeah we have the uh, capability to we have a what you call a customizable dictionary uh -huh. and so you can go in in advance and you can enter in the things that you know are going to come up the city names in your viewing and listening area and so on and it's also got a filter system where you can go in and w one of the examples that we know about is uh it's being used by some people in the northeast and they've got that real thick uh, Boston accent and so the one of their people is named Esther but it comes out as A-S-T-A -A, Asta, Asta. Yeah. and so you can go into this filter system and put in Asta equals Esther and anytime the word Asta comes up it's turn it's captioned as Esther same for Kapok Cop lobster. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. So isn't that great? Um, but uh, it's really great to be able to go through this uh, customizable dictionary and be able to add the words in that you know that are going to come up. It's used in house of worship yeah, yeah, situations. Sure. And yeah. maybe the word like Thessalonica is not oh, in the goodness. typical dictionary. No. <laughs> but they can go through there and they can add all of those biblical words in there. And yeah. so that when their pastor is uh, preaching on the, the topic, it comes off accurately on the caption. Yeah. Need that in Sunday school because we mispronounce a lot of those names. <laughs> Especially when you get in some of those Old Testament things and you go through the through the uh, the, the lineages all, all of the begats. Yeah, yeah the begats. oh my goodness, yeah. where this name exactly, come? exactly. Well, we so appreciate you coming out here and uh, sharing your time with your folks, and uh, uh, this has been such great fun because. We haven't had the opportunity in the last six months to do the things that we like to do, and that's share the latest in technology with people, um, you know, the NAB shows and the CRS shows and all of those things. Yeah, I could easily wind back some, uh, about 15 years ago, maybe 16 years ago, ENCO, as I recall, if I recall correctly, was the very first automation system to incorporate an audio over IP, IP driver in the, available for the software. It was an option, of course. And, uh, and, and it was a live wire driver. And, and as far as I know, it was the very first yeah. one uh, that was what, you know, what is now modern AOIP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're, you're smart. You know your <laughs> you know your. No, I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Sometimes that makes you smart. Appreciate you, Thank man. You. Okay, Thank take care. Hey, we're at the uh, next, next big thing event. We got more people to chat with, including the organizer, Gregory Dahl. Uh, I wish you could be here if you're in the Nashville area. Of course, they're going to Dayton, Ohio, Cincinnati up next, and some cities in Texas will have information on how you can find out about those. Hey, Chris Tobin, I think we're going to hear from one of our sponsors, and you probably know who that is. Yes, Broadcast Bionics. We're going to be uh, hearing about, ooh, that X screen. We talked about that last episode, so let's, let's have it. Let's roll it out. 
everybody get a real good taste of it. Broadcast by on this week in Radio Tech. X Screen 2, the simply amazing new way to control, screen, and log calls using your Telos HX6, IQ6, or VX Talk Show systems. Helping you to get the best calls to air quickly and easily. X Screen 2 is a powerful touchscreen interface that connects alongside your VSET 6 or VSET 12 handsets and even enables you to screen directly on your PC using a USB headset or sound card. X Screen 2 clearly displays the status of lines and hybrids quickly captures caller details for screening and automatically stores a log of calls and easily manages station and show directories of important numbers. There's also a scheduling clock and chat window for instant messaging and visual talkback to other X screen workstations on the system. As soon as the line rings, the caller's name is displayed, if they've rung before, and we can look up their location. X screen also usefully shows how many times they've called before and when they last called. You can add alerts to identify nuisance or persistent callers before you've even answered the call. To route a call to the VSET or headset, simply click on the handset symbol, exactly as you would use the button on the VSET. Using the other icon on the line, we can hold the call or route the call to a hybrid. Selecting an alternative device will change the icon key so you'll always know the destination of the call. The tabs on the right-hand side provide more information and control the selected caller. We can add this caller to a caller directory or create a manual entry for someone we call regularly. Calling someone is as simple as just clicking dial on their entry. A free version of XScreen is included with your HX6, IQ6 and VX Talk Show system. The full version of the software enables the caller database, directories and alerts and other cloud-based features. All Telos customers can try the full version for three months by downloading the free trial. More information is available by contacting Broadcast Bionics or your local dealer. <coughs> there you have it. Broadcast Bionics. Kirk is somewhere All right, I in think we're... at a crazy outdoor event. <laughs> I think we're back. Uh, can you hear me? Am I on? Hello? Is this thing We can working? hear you loud and clear. Good, good, good. Okay. Scalable. Hey, I'm here with... I, I'm here with the uh, uh, the uh, the man responsible, and partially. I was <laughs> yes, partially. partially. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? It's Greg Dahl. Hello, Kirk. How are you? How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. You know, I'm not real good at this stuff, so I'm going to be breaking up. Do you think that um, maybe toward the end of the show we could get a tour of the vehicle? You mean the motorhome? Yeah, certainly can. Okay, if we, if we have time, we'll do sure, that. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, Greg, uh, uh, why have you? put yourself into this position of traveling to 40 plus cities and setting all this up every few days, every day or two. I've wondered the same thing. <laughs> I've wondered the same thing. So, you know, with COVID and everything else going on, uh, in, you know, integration and projects and such like that, they've been a little scarce. And uh, in April, we were talking about what things can we do. Uh, a lot of clients were saying, hey, hold, stop. Don't do anything more. We got to wait for a while and stuff. And so I'm looking at, okay, I got to be doing something. I am not much for sitting around the house. And then I remembered 10 years ago or so where Larry Bloomfield did the Taste of NAB. Yeah. And I know we talk about that a lot because it was really interesting. We did going around the, you know, the country and showing equipment and such. And I thought, well, why can't we do that and put tents? So do here, it yeah, do it outdoors. Do outdoors. Have hand sanitizer, masks. Okay. Hand sanitizer, mask, uh, sanitizer, wipes, and all that other kind of stuff. And stay keeping our distance. <laughs> yes, I, I uh, sometimes I'm forgetting and stuff like that because we're all supposed to be social and yeah. non-social, and you know it depends on the which week we're, we're doing things. Yeah, you know, this is really great for broadcast engineers because most of them are a bit antisocial anyway. Yes. So it, it, it works out great. Yeah, so they're very friendly now because <laughs> we have to keep those rules in place. We got that barrier, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been working out pretty well. Uh, it's our first year. We're learning a lot uh, compared to the first one we did in St. Louis, which was hot. Well, how many cities have you been to so far? This is number 24. And so you're a little bit more than halfway through? Yes, we're going to 40. 40, okay. Yes, so we are at 24. Yeah. I yeah. was sort of seeing 40, and we're, <laughs> we're headed that direction, you know? Uh, we got a few more manufacturers to see, and then nearest to talk. I saw Ed Bucantis here, and one of my favorite people in the world, besides Ed, uh, is uh, Jason Cooper. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. He's the engineer for du at WSM. And he's hosting us today. Oh, yeah. We're at his, yeah, WJXA. We're, yeah, his facility. His facility. Yes. That's right. So uh, you're going to pick up, the, you're going to be a He-Man and pick this thing up. What is this? Well, it, it's FM band pass filter, 600 watts max power, and it's plus or minus 800 kilohertz. Compact and suitable for horizontal or vertical orientation. It's uh, from Sierra, which is a Catrine broadcast brand. It's not that like. It's not that like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with with Catherine and Scala, I didn't know that they made bandpass filters. So I was pl it was pleasantly surprised to see this, and I'm like, because I've had some difficulty finding the right manufacturer for a bandpass for like translators and stuff like that. Yeah. Now I know where to go. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and if you it, you know Catrine now owns uh, companies like Scala, so I know a lot of us engineers were familiar with Scala. And can I get the, there? We go. There's a Scala mini flector right uh -huh. there. Lots can, I, of, can I point something out here? Yeah, what about it? Because I've been doing this on purpose, waiting for people to tell me the polarization is incorrect. It is incorrect. You're, I you're know. Right. And is. I did that on purpose. <laughs> and I've had a few people notice, but most times people don't notice. So the feed horn is horizontal, but the uh, but the reflectors are vertical. Uh huh. That, so that ain't going to work all that well. No, it'll work, but we won't get the gain we want. Yeah, there's no 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 real gain there. Yeah. Wow. And Catrine also makes uh, panel antennas, so uh, this is a. Uh, a, a TV, a broadcast UHF TV panel antenna with the internal power divider. So and and please cool. excuse some of the mark, marks and such on it from traveling. Ah. Getting a little dirty. Gotcha. It bounces around a bit? It does a little bit. Yeah, I, I told Jeff Williams that the fader knobs had fallen off of his console over there. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, let's let's move on around here. Where What are we looking at over here? Oh, we have uh, some things from Not A Bot yet. That's, that company's moving on, doing doing cool things. They've got the Howler Monkey. Oh, the Howler Monkey. Yes. Yeah, that's that's that uh, headphone amp, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a headphone amp that uh, is supposed to be of high quality. Okay, cool. Um, and then we have some P-Tech is one of the sponsors, and CircuitWorks. Yeah, and the inter interesting thing on that is Kyle with CircuitWorks just purchased P-Tech in August. Really? Yes, okay. so that's why you see them together. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Sprite Media is here. Media. They've been a guest on... Uh, this week in Radio Tech. In fact, they're uh, friends with um, Chris Tobin, so yes. they're they That's are great. they're here as well. And uh, RDL, RDL. Oh, they make all kinds of cool stuff. Yes, they do. Yeah. I we just did a tour of their plant in uh, Prescott, Arizona. It was very interesting. Let's. Uh, um, oh, Graham Studios. Is Rod Graham building furniture? Well, Rod is retired. Oh, he's retired. Okay. So George and Jason have taken over the business, uh -huh. and they're doing a fantastic job. In here, here's George's card. Gotcha. And that, and they are following uh, in step with what Rod did with the quality and everything, and they are just continuing to do a great job. And then broadcast Bionics also. Oh, Bionics is here. Yeah, yes. that, that's for, that, they have some such cool software. Pause the video so we wouldn't be interrupted. <laughs> um, let's take a look real quick over here at this thing from Shure. There's a big banner out front, and uh, can, can you pick any of that up and yes. and show it to this us is, here? I was telling you about this earlier. So this is very interesting. So. Emulating what you're using right now. Your, your phone goes here. Yes. Yeah. And this, the mic connects right to your phone. Right. And they have nice little different wires to plug in the back of the mic and then different adapters for Whether your... Whether it's Lightning or C uh, or um, mm -hmm. or the Android uh, mini USB, micro yes. USB. Yes. Okay. If I can find the right one, like here's oh, yeah. one here. Yeah. I think that's for a, I, an Apple type product. Uh -huh. I believe so. So in there, and then they also have where you want to expand it and have your headphones, control your headphones and headphones. So it's very nice. And then if you want to put it down real quick, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm looking over here at the broadcast tools, and what do I see? I've never seen on broadcast tools gear much before, and that's RJ45 connectors. Yes. What are they doing with RJ45? They're uh, keeping up with the times. Okay. <laughs> that's what they're doing. So what's nice about this is they're showing the front and the back. So that's how you got to see... Oh, the RJ forty fives. Okay, so this is the front of this box. Yep, and this it, is the back. It's a it, it's a router switcher. Yep, and then that's so your audio can be on RJ forty fives. Yes. Okay. In there. Nice. And uh, then you might notice something. Well, I think I just broke this. You, oh really? Oh yeah, no! I, I shouldn't admit that. But oh. Yesterday when I plugged it in and I was working on adding the IQS uh -huh. and putting in the switch. Wait, you you have an IQS here? Yes, we have right here. Oh my goodness! Uh, let's let's we. Wow, I've never seen one in the wild. Okay. 
So, so the IQS is a is up. is uh, you can browse into it and you have a mixer. That's correct. So if you're familiar with the IQ, this is the same type of menu. It's a yeah. little bit less in there yeah. because there's no I/O. And then when you're ready to go to your Surface, just click on Surface and there it is. Oh my goodness! Yes, I have I've played with this a bit at my office, but I didn't have it. The one I play with is in Cleveland, Ohio. So should we lock this up? Uh, that, so well, I'll just stay here. So uh, this is in a one RU box. Yeah? Yes. One RU. It's and only about that deep. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a, it's an AES 67 live wire mixer that doesn't have a surface. The surface is your browser. Correct. Yeah. And so if you use like a client VPN to get into your radio station and the system, yeah. then they can navigate to the IP address of that, hit surface, they're ready to go and control their audio levels from their Kodak, the automation, whatever else is coming in. They get eight channels, four or eight yeah. in there. And uh, it's it's very simple I because mean, I put it together, so it must be simple. <laughs> and we would encourage people to... Um to use that over a VPN, but uh, you don't. Uh, the one that I use in Cleveland, Ohio, there's credentials for me to log in, but I don't have to use it over VPN. So, and by the way, this solution works within the station or externally. So you can, instead of buying yes. a physical surface, let's say you wanted to, let's say you had to do a, a bunch of, I don't know, high school ball games for all the high schools in your county, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, you could do that, and you could you can put a, one of these on a salesperson's desk and have a board operator go in there and mix the game right there. Right there. And and if you may recall, you and I talked about soft surface and using TeamViewer, utility computer, mm -hmm. and such like that. Uh, this is the next step in making it much easier for the operators to get into the system and do what they need to do and have just as much control. In fact, if you're really smart, you'd have the salesperson run the board. They'd run all commercials, Kurt. <laughs> all commercials. Right. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Of course, next to oh, it. my gosh. You have one of these in the wild, too. Let me let me tilt down and see that, baby. There we go. This is a Quasar console. Yes, it is. We've got the engine over to the side, and we've got the Quasar, and we can show, you know, give a demonstration for everybody to show how the motorized faders will work. Um, in our environment here we don't have any speakers and such so I can show some meter movement but it, we're limited on that but you can get to all the back screens and see what different things it can do it gives you a good exposure to it wow actually I have seen three of these we did a, a live remote broadcast from uh, our friends over at uh, at Caleb uh, in in Franklin Tennessee and they have three or four of these Whoa, uh, over at Caleb yeah nice. that's just pretty impressive hey yeah. Chris Tobin, uh, we're going to make a move here in a, in a few minutes, and I think it's getting close to time to hear from uh, one of our sponsors, and that would be our friends over yes. at Broadcast Tools. We were just looking at Broadcast Tools and the Pro Mix 4. So, Chris, can you tell us about the Pro Mix 4, and we'll be right back. Certainly. Let's bring up the pictures and get ourselves together with the compact, full-featured monaural, uh, let's see, audio mixing console. It's perfect for pretty much, uh, let's see, podcast. As a matter of fact, even the setup I'm doing right now, if I wanted to have several people with me along the, the East River, we can have the Pro Mix 4 set up and going. We're using our wireless connection. It features three combination microphone line inputs. A dedicated fourth input to the, maybe switch between a balanced line in and built-in USB audio interface. Very handy these days. And, you know, we have a lot of products nowadays that are pretty much USB wireless and USB audio interfaces are very popular. But there's also the three-quarter inch stereo headphone outputs. They're all common. You know how those work. And they're included with individual controls for volume, mix pan, allowing custom mixes. Because I know I've worked with many announcers whose hearing is somewhat uh, deficient, so their own individual control works much better than me trying to be, have one master volume for everybody. <laughs> Other features include a switchable program limiter, an XLR program output, a monitor output with muting. That's very handy because you can get mixes for far less and not have that muting. That's a terrible thing to have. So I have muting. Volume control, mix minus output for connections to an external uh, destination. It's very handy stuff. All of this continues with Broadcast Tools tradition of great choices for solutions that you need in your studio. And a lot of times solutions don't come that easy because you don't realize until you say, oh, wait a minute, I just saw a picture. So, hey, great choice, remote broadcast, podcasting applications, Pro, <clears throat> Pro Mix 4. And if you're wondering, where do I pick this up? How do I go about purchasing one? Real simple, very straightforward. All you have to do is contact the folks at Broadcasters General Store. That's at bgs.cc on the web. Or if you like personal touch, because sometimes that's more favorable, 
352-622-7700. That number again, 352-622-7700. And, you know, it's, it's worth sometimes calling and talking to somebody at the place and say, hey, I want to know more about this. And have you sharpened your pencils? Let's talk some dollars. You'll be surprised at how well you'll be benefiting from that ProMix 4. And you're saying to yourself, now I'm doing podcasts and broadcasts out on location. And these times right now, being what they are, it's well worth it. So, reminder. Cancer General Store, bgs.cc, or I'll just remind everyone, 352-622-7700. That's for the bro tools, <clears throat> broadcast tools, that is, ProMix 4. And don't be surprised if you find something else on their website for things you might need. Got to call first. That's it. Let's get back to Kirk and find out what's happening in Nashville at the uh, next best thing. Oh, oh man, this is so great to see, around here. to see you on location. Yeah, and to see you on location. And uh, here we are in Nashville at WJXA Radio, uh, where we're at the Next Best Thing tour. <laughs> it's a media tour. And look who's with look who's with me here. Dave Broadcasters General Store. Yeah. From Ocala, Yes, California. I see that. No, Ocala. Ocala, Ocala Florida. <laughs> Ocala, um, Ocala. So we... We, we're just about, we're, we're just walking by some uh, Axia stuff. Yes, phenomenal and stuff. If people want Axia in the U.S., they have to talk to who? Anybody you. back in Ocala, Florida. So I just go out and do goodwill handshakes. So, and next to Kirk is it, Mr. Hello. Ed Lucant. Hey, he Ed, does huh? Integration. Sure. Good to see you. Oh, we're not supposed to shake hands. Oh, so let's that back exactly. off on you. Yeah. <laughs> he takes care of a number of stations around the country. In fact, I just quoted some stuff for a a, a customer for a skimmer to Ed over the weekend. So, and Ed's in, based in Tennessee. I'm in, based in Tennessee, the Nashville area, but we can travel anywhere. How come we don't have breakfast or lunch together or something? I don't know. We need to do more of that kumbaya kind of we thing. Can, Ed's, Ed's a terrible cook, <laughs> and you don't want that to happen. Right, so. You probably should go out. So, Dave, how many of the cities have you been to on the 20 so far tour? Every single one. Every one? Every one. 24 cities, right? 24 so cities. Chief Rody is what you're telling me. I am. Yes, exactly. For hire. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so you, you have a, what, about uh, 16 to go? Correct. Tomorrow in Dayton, Ohio? Correct. Tomorrow uh, being Tuesday the 20th. If right, you're watching Dayton, this Ohio. later, you've missed right. it. Cincinnati the next day. Yeah. And then Indianapolis on Thursday. Okay. So. Okay. And I understand that Greg uh, has a, um, a motor home that he carries everything, and he's got this auto drive. He sleeps while it goes. Yes. And everybody gets to sit in the motorhome except Dave. He's in the back trailer. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, I drew short straw. What can I tell you? How many backseat drivers does he have in that, <laughs> in that motorhome? No, wow. but it's been phenomenal to get out here and do this. The sense of community, seeing the engineers. We're not going to trade shows. Guys aren't getting together for lunches or breakfast. All the Zoom meetings, which some guys have said I'm ready to cut my wrist. Because yeah. after about two or three minutes, they're just like, oh, okay. It's fun waking up the guys who fell asleep during the Zoom, especially when they're a presenter. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, <laughs> Anyway, so I think what this is bringing to the industry is phenomenal. I mean, you look at the Quasar, brand new, would have been a hit come NAB 2020. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't show up in Vegas. Yeah. There's people walking up, grabbing the console, getting the faders, looking at it. And they're going, this is phenomenal. So there's things they're touching and seeing that they wouldn't get otherwise. Have you seen the IQS? I just saw it because we got that uh, about a week ago and oh, got okay. it right to Greg. Phenomenal. With all the remote <clears throat> stuff now. Ed, you consult with a lot of different people, not all broadcasters either. <laughs> right. um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, how do you, I'm catching something. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, Ed how, how do you, it's the IQS we talked about a minute ago. So it's a, it's a rack mount box that hooks onto your AOIP network, mm -hmm. and you can control it from a browser in the same building or outside, halfway around the world, down the hall. How do you see a, a console like that being used? It's designed to be an HTML. You don't install anything. You just use your browser. How do you see people using that, broadcast or non-broadcast? All of the comforts of the studio from the comfort of your home. You, that's my first impression is... It gives you what we've always been asking for. Normally, you've had to, or usually you've had to install a console and then have the remote access features. Right. But now, if we're working from home, why am I building this big studio? Even that's what I usually build. You know, we this paradigm shift is going to go on. And Greg was just saying before, you know, we have another year maybe of, of this. And we don't know what this is, but we know it's going to be done remotely. Yeah. And from yeah. a support, someone like me, support or the end user, 
if I'm not spending all that money on furniture and a console in the studio, I can spend more on uh, internet capacity. Yeah. I can spend more on maybe what I need to have at someone's home or multiple. Maybe the host and the co-host are in their individual basements. They're not getting together at all. Yeah. It, it gives you another tool to find a solution that we did not have before. The biggest thing that I like about a console like that that's totally browser-based is that finally, for the first time in my whole radio career, I can drink what I want to in the control room. Because it's my house. As long as it's your laptop, your smelling <laughs> line. But you bring up an interesting, it's probably an opportune time for something like this. Because we're looking for things that are going to replace Flash and other technologies that are going away oh, yeah. when everything has to be HTML. Yeah, which this is, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. this is this makes sense. I'm, yeah. I, I like something. I'm going to find a way to play with one of them. Yeah. At this point, I think BGS should become a, like a lazy boy dealer. So when you buy your IQS, <laughs> I can sell you a nice leather recliner, and you're all set to go. We should also sell a complete line of beverages. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Adult beverages only, yes. But you're going to have to have the three monitors around, one with your automation, one with your console, one with your browser. And then what you, you're going to have two joysticks and two foot pedals. Ah. So you can like steer to whatever you need. And, yeah. Yeah. All right. All um, right. Well, we're going to move on, I guess, to the, to the next next booth here. Anybody know what's in here? No idea. No idea. There's a couple of good things in there. Well, why don't we head over to the Innovonix portion because they're a sponsor of the show, and, yes. and you know something about them. So let's just head. Oh, well, so is Henry. Henry's right here. Oh, hey, this is the this is the Henry Power Clamp. Ed, yes. you, do you know anything about this? This I have used before. Yeah. Well, and Hank says it's really good. It is. Let me hold it up there. There we go. The Henry Power Clamp. And Hank's been on the show to explain why this is better than just old MOV technology. Um, it's, got, it's, it's got a whole bunch of little parts in there. It's got yeah. MOVs and it's probably some combination of serial and parallel, I'm guessing. Well, it's actually a little bit smart. and so that, Anyway, that, there we, can, can you? I can't reach that far. Can you take care of that? Thank I you. I have used them before. They do work. And this, this is something we've needed for years. Uh, yes. This is the back, the back UPS fail-safe uh, power switch. And so this will allow you to um, change out the batteries in your UPS. Well, more than that. Yeah. So you have two power cords. The, the wall, essentially, let me see, do I need? you have the wall coming in yep. and the output of the UPS. Ah. If the UPS fails... Yeah. It switches over to your wall, and there's where you got your your, your rack mount power. Gotcha. These in the 15 amp, 120 volt range are kind of hard to find, except if you buy it as part of some manufacturer's system. Oh. But these are anywhere from 700 to 1700 dollars. Wow. If you just this fills a niche for the broadcasters that. Um, I actually have these coded in a project. Like this is the, this is the right size for my radio stations too. The way we do UPSs. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is, this is well thought out. There were six on the table when we started. We seem <laughs> to be short five. I got my discount. So, <laughs> I'm gonna go check Kirk's car. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's. Let, moving on. Uh, well, BDI is here. Broadcast Devices. Yes. They have a whole range of, of good stuff. Uh, yes. let, let, let's uh, let's head on over here though. Oh my goodness! I could just spend all day here. Uh, oh, Angry Audio is here too. Look, yes. look at what they've got. A uh, we've been talking about this for quite a while. Oh, it's it's plugged in. This is the. Uh, I'll, I'll set it down over here because I show it enough on on the on the regular show. So the blue, the the cord's probably caught. It's the Bluetooth audio gadget. This lets you take your cell phone and hook it to your audio console. That way, you can put callers on the air from your home studio if you need to do that. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's it. That's the Bluetooth audio gadget. Yeah, sure, sure. Here it is. Yeah, the Bluetooth here. Uh, there we go. Bluetooth audio gadget. It's got uh, audio gazentas and gazatas on the back, right? Uh, digital uh, out, um, uh, and analog. And there you go. And you can pair this easily. If you hold that for a sec, it's got a spring-loaded switch here. Puts it in the pairing mode, so you can pair it with your phone quickly. And if you've got a number of different disc jockeys that come in and use a, a control room, well, they can each be paired with this, no problem. Easy to unpair too. You can reset it. And uh, this again lets you put uh, callers from your cell phone on the air, and it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be a, a, a pot style call. It can be a Skype. It can be uh, a FaceTime. 
It can be, um, you know, a, a, a Facebook Messenger call, right? Any of the WhatsApp, be any of those, so you can get really high quality through this into your board. Also, if you want to play audio that you have stored on your phone, maybe you did an interview, maybe there's some extra good mix of a song that uh, doesn't exist anywhere else except on your phone. Well, you can put it through your console with with that. Oh, wow. another reason for the Bluetooth type gadgets and such yeah. is the COVID concerns. It gives you an ability to go hands free from somebody's ah. laptop and move audio yeah. without touching things in a studio or a wall plate in some place. Exactly. Now, yes. There's two more things oh. I want to show you. Oh real yeah, quick. sure. What's so, this? This the shore view is doing, is doing what you're doing right now, but yeah. it's all built in, so you can use a camera. And I don't have power to it, but you put your camera on top of that, and you can also you can then stream from that. So it's a portable live streaming studio is what yeah. it is. Okay. On a, on a camera. Yeah, Pretty neat. neat. Pretty and, neat. And you can hook up to Wi-Fi, or uh, it doesn't have cellular built in, I suppose. No, it's just okay. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Okay. Wi All right. Yep. Good deal. And then one last thing I want to send. I want to send a personal message out to Ben. Yeah. Ben, you're supposed to call me. I got no RDS. Call me. <laughs> I called says, him earlier. It says no RDS right there. Yeah, we're missing. We got a low signal right now. Uh, I need Ben's help. Uh, I use this stuff a lot. It's, yes. It's oh, good. I use it a lot too. I love it. But I, Ben, no RDS. Got to call me. Well, the Aaron 655 is a big sponsor of This Week in Radio Tech. And uh, if you get it from Broadcaster General Store, yeah. and everybody's happy. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, let's see if we can go get Jason Cooper over here. He's been... He's been like I'm gonna park the camera right here, right here. Hi, how you doing, man? Good, 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 good to see you. Are you uh, hey, Chris. Are you broadcasting? Are you, yeah, we're we, yeah, absolutely, we're broadcasting. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it's it's uh, you can you can leave your mask on or take it off. Up to you. Yeah, well, I'm high risk, you know. Oh, you I don't want to yeah end up back in the hospital, you know. Back over here, though. Yeah. Or no, yeah. We're at your facility here. You take care of WJS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, Nate and Zach are here with. Hey. Yeah. Um, uh, that building there is, is full of audio over IP, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a, a live wire plant. It's got um, three radio stations or three radio signals and a uh, multitude of production rooms. Yeah. And, um, yeah, a pretty extensive tech center. And I'm guessing, standing here talking to Chris Crump, you've been using a fair amount of commerce gear yes. during COVID to keep people on the air. Well, uh, we use um, a lot of their stuff for television for other applications you know we support a lot of broadcasters and uh we use uh the live shot for uh circle television for morning shows that excellent people we're just bragging on these things these are just excellent pieces of equipment um but yeah and we use just whatever fits at you know whatever fits the application uh we'll use it good deal Hey, I was hoping we could have this function at the WSM transmitter site, but I know there's corporate stuff to deal with yeah they'd have the the corona police be out there and um yeah a whole thing but uh hopefully it'll get to the point where we can o they can open it up to the public you know i think there's some renovation this year supposed to happen um so hopefully soon maybe next big event comes through we'll be able to do that um but yeah oh, zach and uh, nate just vanished <laughs> oh no there they are yeah. trying to blow up their spot um but yeah how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's, and and uh, it's good to see you because we don't get to see each other at, hardly at all. Right. And we live in town. Oh, but yeah, we live in town. But, we used to uh, go eat out. Yeah, we need to. Well, yeah. We'll, there's a lot of patio options around here. We could, yeah, we could. ML Rose is up the road. It's one of our favorite spots. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we'll have to, we'll have to get together. Um, well, thanks for letting me put you on the yeah, spot absolutely. here. Absolutely. Where's, uh, where's it headed? Oh, we're on This Week in Radio Tech. Oh really? An audience of so thousands. I finally I have the high honor of being on it. <laughs> yeah, you won't answer my, you know, my no, no, my this, email. This is I, your I never, life. Am, hello, everyone. I am sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I always feel like I don't have enough to contribute. I, I was like, if I want to, if I'm going to get on there and talk, I want to have something I can really, you know, share. Do you remember years ago? It may have been ten years ago. You gave an EAS uh, presentation to the uh, SBE chapter. Mm -hmm. That was one of the best present. I mean, I am not, I can't say I'm a huge fan of EAS. Yeah. You made me interested in it. Right. Um, yeah. And that was back when I was in PPAC, oh, yeah. which yeah. in all candor, hopefully all that stuff is public information. So, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, yeah, but yes, thank you. Uh, but yeah, it, you have to get me on a topic that I'm, you know, familiar with and I'll, I'll get going. Chris Tobin just said in my ear, uh, Jason Cooper, this is your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we
Well, yeah, that's um, we finally worked it out for me to to join you. Thank you so much. Well, next time, you can join us on the camera with with, and we can see your your pretty yeah, face. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Um, Chris, oh, yeah. have, have, you got, have you got a sec? Oh, he, now he. That, Jason's glad to be out of the picture now. Oh, nice. Would you like some hand sanitizer? Yeah, I, I would. Can we wipe? Can we wipe the microphone down? I bet it's sure. a mess. Bye now. The uh, uh, sanitizing. <laughs> oh, good. We're gonna we're gonna sanitize the, the the mic here. There you go. Ah, there we go. We're trying to be there very safe go. and uh, socially responsible. Good. You're not gonna be late for surgery. Um, in this event. <laughs> you were not, Chris Tobin. He I can't hear. You, unfortunately, Chris Tobin said you're not gonna be late for surgery. Oh yes, absolutely <laughs> not. Would you care for a mask? Uh, so we could. I, I was told not to wear one. Oh. Uh, talking to people, um, I'm yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> would you? Would you? If, I'll wear one if you want. I'm good. Okay. All right. Good deal. Um, I've probably had enough to drink where I'm not uh, infectious right now. Oh, so. I see. <laughs> So you have a very sterile liver. <laughs> yeah, so, nice. so what is? Um, uh, I'm just kidding about that. So what? Uh, uh, what? What's happening in your, in your world? Well, um, I got tired of sitting in the basement. Yeah. And in talking with Greg Dahl and uh, Dave Kirsten from Broadcast General Store, this plot was hatched to get out into the world to visit customers. And oops. Okay. Um, uh, so we're out in the world and we're visiting customers and we're showing product and. You know, this is the next best thing to not having NAB, the fall show or the spring show and or the broadcasters clinic in Wisconsin, which is always a big show for us. So we're having fun. I'm so glad that Greg Dahl has done this. It's, it's just it's awesome that he has. I'm glad that you are participating. Telos is sure. Scala, Catrine, all these companies. I'm amazed that Greg Dahl can do this because, number one, he's from Wisconsin and he's a Packers fan. And number two, he's a Marine. So. <laughs> You cover all the bases there, don't you? <laughs> no, it's it's great that Greg's doing this, and uh, uh, he has a really nice motorhome, so you should come out and see it. We're actually, thank you for mentioning that. We're going to take a break right now, and uh, uh, Chris Tobin, why don't you lead us into our uh, last spot set? Going to hear from a couple great sponsors, uh, one of which the Max Connect we're using right now, and we're going to try to come to you live from the motorhome as long as it's not a Faraday motorhome. I don't think it is. Okay. Well, we'll then we'll be back with you, Chris. I'll turn it over to you. All right, and we're going to hear about the Angry Audio product line, which those of you who know uh, Catfish know that the products he comes up with a very uh, practical, pragmatic approach to solutions in the broadcast studio, TV, and radio. And then we're going to also have our Max Connect uh, recording of uh, what's going on with Max Connect and how you could benefit from it. So, uh, so Suncast, if you're good enough, let's start the roll. I'm Gary Morrow. Midwest Regional Director of Engineering for Alpha Media. When I first spoke with Josh Bone about Max Connect, he told me they'd work great for remote transmitter sites where connectivity was a challenge. And you know, he's absolutely right. We even have sites where we're using this as a backup to our STL using Max Connect's dual carrier option, and it works perfectly. We also have times where we need to be able to get out to a venue where it's kind of challenging because everybody and his brother is trying to stream video at the same time, like at a big sporting event. And you know what? Our data gets through every time because it's prioritized packet data. It works for us. It'll work for you. Max Connect. Check it out. Excellent. Well, Max Connect is the way to go if you're doing wireless on location. Let me add to this. I am here to you, here with you via Max Connect, my little spider here on the East River, New York City. We've been doing pretty well for the last hour. It's on battery. Yes, I'm not plugged into utility. I am off the grid as far as power is concerned. But let's get back to Angry Audio for a moment. We started things off with them. We went into Max Connect, and now it's Angry Audio time. Now, you remember Studio Hub? Yes, Studio Hub, that was a product that came out. People thought, thought nothing of it at first, and now they can't live without it. And if you've been to Steve Lampin's sessions on uh, audio cabling and, and cross mode, uh, oh, common mode rejection and how it works, you'll know that a Cat5 cable. 60 will work just fine in the audio world, even in uh, video. If you have the right terminations, and Studio Hub is the way to do it. And uh, Angry Audio brings that to your uh, to your doorstep. So think about it. And I did an event, what was it, this past summer, before we got locked down, on the Chelsea Piers. It was a music event. We did a recording of a, a samba band, and I used Cat5 cable between the instruments, microphones, all across the floor, back to my mixer. People looked at me like, where's the computer? I said, no computer. This is strictly audio. Couldn't believe it. We uh, streamed it, streamed the audio, recorded. They played it back. They've enjoyed it ever since. It's been great. So I'm just letting you know that you should look into it and find out more about these things. Broadcast General Store could help. And also, you know, if you're in the studios and you're building out stuff and looking at the website, there's a lot of great stuff. It's now time to think about their portable 
the uh, we showed you the uh, the Bluetooth event, also the headphone amp, very handy little guy that could be used at home in a studio on location wherever you like. Think about it. These are things to consider. It's now time to think about what if I could do this. We're all in a situation now with where we have to operate off site. These are the tools that you need to look at. Studio Hub, Angry Audio, together give you solutions you can make things happen. And that's the way to think about it. Think of it as a solution. Think about what is this. Don't think of it as it's a Cat5 cable, it's an RJ45, it's only a computer. No, no, no. Think of what you're going to do with it, how it works. Like I said, I mentioned Steve Lampin only because if you ever watched some of his webinars about how to do these things with Cat5 cables, you'd realize that the Angry Audio product is a perfect fit for everything you're going to do. I've used it on many occasions off of video and audio. It works. It works really well. So let's see what Kirk is up to now. I believe they're going into a motorhome. At least that'd be sad. We, I'm not sure. We are. We're talking about I, drinking earlier. He's with Chris Crump before. <laughs> it's scary what goes on the two of those guys together. I make drinking jokes, but I drink a lot of water. <laughs> so that's, hey, Greg. Hello. We're, we're, uh, we are in the, um, the reason why this whole uh, Next Best Thing tour came about. Your excuse to buy a motorhome. Correct. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's been, we've been looking since last fall, and this gave us a reason. Yeah, so, yeah. And here it is. So this, how many feet is this motorhome? 44. 44 feet. Well, you know, being engineers, we got to be technical. It's yeah. 43 and 11 inches. So it is 1,000 pounds a foot of weight. Empty. Right. Right? Yes, empty. Gross weight. Okay, so if you chop this thing up into 44 sections, there are 1,000 pounds a section. That's right. Oh, wow. It's heavy. Wow. And you feel it going down the road because you just glide down the road. Yeah, I've, I've never driven a motorhome. I've actually never ridden in a motorhome. I've never slept overnight in a motorhome. Oh, wow. This, thing, this is pretty cool. You've been deprived. I've, apparently so. Wow. So this motorhome pulls a trailer. Yeah, 12 foot trailer. And the trailer holds all the stuff we just saw? Everything. That's amazing. Yeah, and we still have more room for more. It, and is it Tetris every time, or do you know where stuff goes? Uh, I have a certain way to put it in. It, it might a little bit when we're placing things on the tables. They get a little move to here, a little there, but quickly they all go in a certain place. Now, your your goal uh, going to forty different cities. Uh, obviously, th there was a, there was a, an element of hey, I long and mm -hmm. and keep my family forth, right? Yes, um, and keep my name out there mm -hmm. to Radio Stay Astros engineers. Definitely. Uh, what what are the motivations? I mean, obviously, you're doing a great thing for the engineers who come by here to see stuff. So we're trying to show the equipment. We're putting the two together because uh, what we've been talking about, there's Zoom calls, there's WebExes and stuff, and we can do the, all, all, a lot of those, but here we can actually touch those. We're being as safe as we can with the COVID rules and such like that, and we're just we're coming to you. So uh, back to your city's coming up. Uh, this week you're here in Nashville. Right. Then we go to Dayton, Dayton tomorrow. We'll be in Cincinnati at the Voice of America Museum. Oh. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And then Indianapolis for Thursday. Uh -huh. uh, we usually do four days a week. And then the week after, we are breaking the rule. We're going to do five because we'll do Oklahoma City, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, and then Houston. Wow. And we generally wow. do two weeks on, two weeks off. We try our best to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's two weeks, one week off, and then we'll do two more weeks to finish it up before Thanksgiving. So where should people go to find out where you're coming to? So there's a Facebook page, right? There's a Facebook page under Second Opinion Communications. We also just launched our web page, which is isupportradio.com. isupportradio.com. Yes. We'll put that in the show notes, isupportradio.com. Yes. Cool. Are you, are you going to do this next year? We're thinking about yeah. it. Yeah? We're thinking. <laughs> um, probably, but uh, uh, we've learned a lot. Yeah. And, and I want to implement what we've learned working with the vendors and I want to make it, you know, I want to make this as best as we can. And, um, I can, we've, you know, I, I'm learning a lot. I'm doing this. I joke about, I'm not a broadcast engineer anymore. I'm more of a producer for a show, <laughs> you know? So, so something that we here in Nashville, we made a mistake about this. <clears throat> uh, we should have had our SBE meeting today mm. and we should have had it here. Uh, with, with you guys, and we should have ordered some sandwiches and pizzas in, and, and but we're not doing food. Oh, right. That's right, you're not doing food. We can't do that's food. Right. I, bottled water, and that's yep. all. Okay. Otherwise, if we had food, that would attract a lot of people in very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's too dangerous. Well, we're gonna we're gonna eat at home and then come to this thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So how about if I encourage SBE chapters in all those cities that we mentioned um, to mm -hmm. hey, call up your troops, get 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 your listserv going, and tell them when you're going to be there and where. 
Yes, and, and we're in contact with them the best we can, and yeah. we're out there soliciting, and we're always looking for a radio television station's parking lot, because all we need is a parking lot. Uh, yeah. Self-contained from there. Good deal. All right. Greg, thank you so much. Your effort and your dream and your uh, making this dream come true is, is really amazing. This is uh, actually, it's better than I thought it would be. Oh, well, good. I'm yeah. glad we made it, made it better than you thought it was going to be, and I appreciate you coming out because I know you're busy and everything that you're doing, and this uh, takes time to come out here just like setting it up. And um, it just, you know, we're enjoying it, and I love having you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Well, safe travels. You, yep. And you don't really drive and sleep at the same time, do you? That oh. doesn't have autopilot on that motorhome. Well, I've heard some people trying that, but they didn't end up keeping the motorhome very long. Hey, Chris Tobin, uh, I know Greg can't hear you, but if you got any questions or, or last-minute comments uh, about uh, what Greg's doing here, no, I, I just have to applaud his energy, his effort. I think it's great. It would be nice to see if he can do it next year. I understand logistics could be an issue, but I think it's a great job. Any, uh, how far northeast did you go? I, I didn't get a chance to look at the website. Or is it how just far northeast in, uh, did you go? Midwest, south. Uh, we went as far as Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia. Next year, oh, you know, as things change, I want to get up into the New York area. I want to get up into Boston, Maine, stuff yeah. like that. But we only went as far as Philadelphia, and that was it. Okay. Well, and we, before uh, you do it, if you do it again, we need to have you on a couple of torch shows with schedules and, and interviews and things like sure. that. And of course, you come anywhere near me or Chris, and we'll do a live remote from there. That's awesome. I appreciate <clears throat> it. All Thank right. you. All right, Chris, I think we're about done here. It's, uh, it is, woo, it's time to go. And uh, my tip of the week is if the next best thing is coming anywhere near your area, you should go and see some of the people that you miss seeing at NAB and the new products, new technologies that are out, and talk to some of your engineer friends who show up as well. Chris, uh, you got anything for us before we head out? I would just say for the for the tip is check out the Nespex thing vendors, the products. I saw some stuff that makes total sense in this current time for outdoor broadcast or off-site broadcasting, so think about it. This is an opportunity, and check into it. It's worth it. Good deal. Hey, I want to say thanks to Suncast, our producer. Yeoman's job. Thanks for all your work today and helping me get set up and making it all work, uh, Suncast. Really appreciate you. Chris, appreciate you very much in New York City, uh, out uh, on remote again using Max Connect to, to stay connected to uh, Suncast. And thanks also to Andrew Zarian, the founder of the GFQ Network. Really appreciate his vision and effort making all this happen as well. I'm Kirk Harnack. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye.